morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, August 4th. Thank you so much for joining in to our weekly PPACA webinars. If you're new to the format, if you want to raise your hand and ask a question, you can do so by uh, just clicking on the little hand icon to the right of your screen on the control panel, or you can just uh, type in a question in the question box, and we'll answer it at the end of the webinar. Um, again, if you're new, these webinars really only take about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the topics that we have to discuss. As you can imagine, as we ramp up towards the you know, group renewal season and the open enrollment season, we have a lot to talk about and we'll <laughs> have increasingly more to talk about as we get closer to that date. Um, so on that topic, let's just jump right into the uh, agenda for today. And uh, FFM certification is now open. You go to portal.cms.gov and you uh, click on to, uh, to log into the system. If you need help resetting your login credentials, the number is there uh, on the screen, the 855-267-1515. They are the only folks that can reset your password or help you with that. I certainly can't. I would love to, but I can't. Um, so, if you do see logging in, um, then go ahead and contact them with that number. Also, um, just as a side note on your handouts today, I did go through and capture some screens and do a very simplistic sort of instructional PowerPoint for you, whether you're taking the refresher course or you're a newbie just uh, certifying for the first time this year. Hopefully there's enough information in that uh, PowerPoint for you to get you through. But if you have any questions, I'm absolutely um, you know, happy to help you uh, if I'm able. So give me a call, but get it done. You have up until November 1st to do it for the first date of the sale. Um, just as a reminder, if you did certify last year, when you log in, you're automatically going to be registered for the individual refresher course. And that you can find in your um, curriculum status. So don't register for the, the core individual without checking that curriculum status um, or you're going to take the core course versus the refresher. Um, another thing that I did notice is it didn't have the shop on it. So you will have to then go to um, training options and choose the shop training if you want to certify for the shop. Keep in mind that the only thing you need to do on the shop is sign that agreement and you click through about 14 screens and hit I agree and you're done. Um, so I would encourage you to do that. Um, there are other vendors. When you get in there, there's the MLMS, which is the free system through HHS. That's um, where I took the testing. There's also AHIP. AHIP, um, there is instructions. There is a cost to it. And I'm trying to see what the cost is. For the individual marketplace training only, it's $125. For the shop, it's $125. Uh, for the individual marketplace refresher, it's $75. That's the AHIP training um, through portal.cms.gov. And that looks like it offers approximately nine CEs. Um, so that is something that you can do as opposed to the MLMS. There's also NAHU. Um, their pricing is dependent upon whether you're a member of NAHU, whether you want shop an individual or just individual, the refresher, etc. But for the whole shebang, individual and shop, if you're a NAHU member, it's $107.98 and non-member is $117.78. Um, and this also offers uh, CE courses uh, you know, nine for new individual, two for shop, five for the individual refresher. So it looks like you can get anywhere from, you know, what, 11 to 7 maybe. Um, so that's an option as well. Um, yeah, I just mentioned that the MLMS refresher course is auto-loaded. And don't forget the agreements, the individual on shop, I mentioned that as well, and the PowerPoint is attached. So on with the next nugget of news. Highmark um, received a call yesterday from Highmark. On July 27th, letters were sent out to any of their insureds that were on Marketplace and chose the Alliance Flex 2100. 
because there was a discrepancy in the SBC specific to out-of-network benefit, and this affects whether they're, um, you know, just a, a base plan or the cost share reductions. This is this is for all of them on marketplace. Um, they are going to have a special election period to change their plans if they choose to. 60 days from the date of the letter, so July 27th, 60 days from there. Um, I did attach this letter as well in the handout so you can see it. In a nutshell, um, there are a couple of things that they can do. They can choose this, you know, to, to keep the same plan if their out-of-network benefits haven't stung them and they you know, don't want to move off of the plan or change their plan, um, then they do nothing. If they, another option that they could do is um, if they do call into Highmark or call you for assistance, if you just have them update their same plan, then all the uh, previously met deductibles and coinsurance will transfer over to the quote unquote new plan. They also have an option to retroactively go back to their effective date and change their plan. This option is only available to do through the marketplace. And they, it, it sounds really crazy why they would even do it, but they can change back to the effective date. All premiums will be refunded, but when they sign up, they then have to pay all past premiums. They can also uh, change with another carrier. So um, there's, there are some options here. The letter explains it pretty well, um, but if you have questions on it, let us know. I do think that the majority of the folks are just going to stay where they're at, they're not going to change their plan because again, it's really just for out-of-network benefits only. And additionally, if they have 60 days, they're looking at a 9-1 effective date or a 10-1 effective date. And remember, these plans are all calendar year. So if they, um, you know, reset their deductible by going to a different carrier, um, they only have those three or two months to accumulate towards the new deductible, and then they have to switch again in January. So it seems that, you know, that it's not going to be a popular decision to make changes. Um, there's a Walmart opportunity. Um, I, I wasn't able, I didn't get the blast in in time to make the newsletter that's going out this morning, but it will be in next week's. If you are interested in working the Walmart, this is, I mean, there are various locations, and it's specific to under 65 health. So um, if you want to sign up to do that, um, just shoot me an email and I'll send you the blast that just came out yesterday from CMS. Um, if, you, if you really are able to wait till next week, that's fine too. It will be in next week's newsletter. Um, on to Aetna Group, the Aetna Funding Advantage. This is a level funded, self, essentially self-insured program. Um, they are going down to six lives six enrolled lives as of 10-1. They're supposed to be very, very competitive in the 2 to 50 market. Um, this is really where they're trying to go. Um, they're, you know, really putting a lot of eggs uh, and resources behind these, these programs. Um, so if you want us to quote it, just remember it can go down to six lives since it's level funding. There's not a risk of anyone jumping up over those cl that claim bucket, and Aetna has a 10% surcharge, so they charge 110% for the claims bucket, whereas some other carriers charge um, 125. So, you know, right there off the bat, in comparing with carriers, uh, you could save possibly 15% just in the the claim surcharge alone. But again, if you have questions on that, let me know. If you want us to quote it, just send it in and let us know. And speaking of quoting, the renewals, uh, just let us quote them for you. It doesn't cost you anything or us anything to quote it and see if your clients are where they should be. Um, and it, again, it shows that you're doing your due diligence and you're there for, for your client. So anything that creates that stickiness, I, I think, can't, uh, can't be a bad thing. So here's, here's an interesting bullet point. If you're looking for work, um, we have an agent partner, an agency partner in the York area, and he's looking for some help um, for the under 65 segment. If you're looking to pick up some extra hours, pick up some extra dough, um, shoot me an email and let me know, or just give me a call and I can give you the information um, for our agency partner um, and get you in touch with him. 
that's pretty much it. That uh, brings us up to the end of our, um, our agenda, and now we're into their, our open forum. So if you have any questions, uh, it does look like some have been typed in. As a reminder, while you're finalizing your questions, next webinar is Thursday the 11th at 9.30. So I do have some questions. Um, Jay says, can I get a copy of that letter? Yes, it is attached in the um, attachments in your control panel, Jay, but I will email it over to you as well. Um, um, Elise says, as a reminder, she's hollering. She's saying there's specific paperwork needed to get quotes, so keep that in mind. <laughs> so my uh, AFA call to action on letting us quote your groups with the AFA. There is specific paperwork in order to do that, so please reach out to Elise or her team and get that paperwork if you're interested in um, selling. We can quote, Dave asks if we can quote AFA in Maryland, and we can, um, but Maryland has a different claims bucket, and I think they actually are at 115 uh, percent, but yes, Dave, we can quote that. if. If uh, you want to reach out to Elise and get that additional paperwork, um, I'm sure she'll get that to you. And that's it. That brings us up to the end of our questions. Um, as always, I appreciate you tuning in and asking those questions. It helps um, us get better and hopefully uh, provides a, a great resource for you as well. So um, again, <laughs> thank you for joining in. And hopefully, we'll talk to you next week. You'll join in on the 11th. Until then, enjoy the balance of your week and have a, an amazing weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye.